farm is owned by my father and my uncle in a partnership and has been since the late 70s, I believe. Uh, we milk around 1,000, 1,050 cows is ballpark. We have 24 full-time equivalent employees, maybe 25, I'm not positive, but that's the general idea. 2,500 to 3,000 acres. And I have been on the farm uh, since the late 90s. I've been on the farm continuously since I was, I don't know, 14, but I went to college and did some other stuff and worked part-time a lot for several years and then came back full-time in uh, 1997-ish. What are the biggest changes that have occurred in dairy farming since you've been involved on the farm? Well, I guess the most obvious one in, with regard to our farm is the size and with regard to the dairy industry as a whole. It, it, obviously this trend had started before I got involved, but uh, when I started working for my dad and my uncle, uh, we were at 200 cows, and we've grown considerably in, in fits and starts, but that's kind of how it works. Uh, so size of dairies across the board, but, but personally, size is probably the biggest uh, difference, and, 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 a, and a lot of things come with that. The second biggest change uh, has got to be the employment situation, or the labor situation rather. The number of people that we employ, the amount of responsibility those people have has grown and grown and grown. And uh, it, it's working well for us. Uh, I enjoy watching our employees grow and, and learn and, and take over responsibilities. Uh, I, I'm not going to tell you I'm the greatest manager or the greatest trainer because I'm not, but uh, we get it done and it's, it's a learning process. It can be a real grind sometimes and sometimes it doesn't work, but when it does work it's pretty rewarding and that's, that's something that didn't, didn't happen on a, on a 200 cow dairy. Yeah, I couldn't tell you how many employees we had, but it was considerably less. Uh, the public is far more aware in this day and age than they were in, in the, in the, even in the 90s of what is going on down on the farm. Uh, obviously antibiotics, the presence of antibiotics on the farm. And we are aware of the concern and, and the industry is another way that it's changing. Uh, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say we're phasing them out, but we are aware that uh, they may become less available and, and, and I'm fine with it. Uh, we can manage around that. The cow numbers rather have gone up, I wouldn't say gradually, They've gone up in accordance with, with building, as you might expect. When we have room for them, we bring them on board. Um, has the increase in herd size and change in facilities affected getting the work done each day, especially in terms of labor needs? It has not affected it as much as you would think. I mean, in, in terms of labor needs, obviously you need more people. But as, in terms of individual cow attention, it hasn't changed a, a, a heck of a lot. They, they and, I, and I don't think it would, I think we could my guess is we could go to a 1,500 cows and still give each cow the same specific individual attention we do now and the same attention we gave them when we had 200 cows. It hasn't changed that much. Um, part of that is having more people and training them appropriately. Uh, and part of that is just, uh, I think it's, it's the scope, the way you look at things. When you're at 200 cows, you look at 1,000 and think that's impossible, I could never do that. But looking back, there's not as much difference as you would think. Yeah, the, the, the size, the major difference when you grow is obviously profitability. There, why else would you grow? And uh, the fact that you can live a real life and have a vacation once in a while, even though I still don't actually do that, but I get days off here and there, which when you have uh, uh, like a 30 cow dairy, 50 cow dairy, that doesn't happen. It's, it, and that's no way to live. <laughs> Do you have a sense if most employees have experience with dairy cows before they um, come to start work on your farm? More that have experience in the dairy industry than don't. I honestly somewhat prefer the ones that don't have experience because you can then train them. Uh, you can train them the way that you want things done. The ones that the people that do have dairy experience, it's it's somewhat hit or miss. We just hired two people that were trained very well 
and uh, they they came in and you know, it took two days to train them the way that we do things and they do things right they understand they, they understand the priorities involved what needs to be done just just the little things and, and little things can be very important uh, but we've had people that come in and are sloppy and and lazy and had worked somewhere else for eight years doing that and having that reinforced and that those are hard habits to break the people that come to work now that that don't have any experience in the industry end up sticking with it uh, far more so than in the past in the past it was uh, kind of a placeholder and in the pet by the past I mean like I, I can remember people that we had in the 90s that were very good employees but as soon as the factory started started hiring again they were gone and uh, that's well there are no factories anymore so that's not not really a risk factor but uh, that doesn't happen so much anymore. We have a person right now that came in with no experience. We trained her. She rose to a management position here, and now she's moving on to another farm. You know, which obviously is crazy that she wouldn't stay with us. But just the same, it's it's nice to see her staying in the business. I think that dairy producers' employees' management skills have kept pace with the changes in dairy farming. I don't think that the industry as a whole has kept up the way it should, and and I mean that from top to bottom: producers and support people. Uh, uh, ven vendors, if you will, I think that's the like regular world business term for the people you buy stuff from, right? Uh, consultants, you name it. It's something we're coming to slowly, a and uh, that's that's an unfortunate thing because we're leaving a lot of fruit on the on the tree, so to speak. There are a lot of people with a lot of potential out there that that don't get trained properly, and that's a shame. I, I think there are a lot of people that, that there's a large Hispanic presence in in Michigan in the dairy industry. And there's still a lot of racism out there, and, and it's soft racism. It's not. I hear other dairy producers all the time using the word Mexican, and it might as well be the N word. They don't mean it that way, but that's how it comes out of their mouth. And I know they don't mean it that way, and I know that they like these the, the, these people that, that that are Hispanic that work for them, and I know they want the best for them, but they just don't understand the level of respect they have to have if you truly want them to feel valued and you want to uh, develop their potential as they should be. The, the thing that people don't realize about the Hispanic population, in Michigan anyway, that's working on farms is if they'd been brought up the way I was brought up, they'd probably be accountants. They would have gone to school, they would have done a hell of a lot better than I did, a lot of them. And they would be living the life of, you know, my cousin who's an accountant. Uh, but they didn't. They, you know, they, they dropped out of school in eighth grade to work doesn't mean they aren't smart and doesn't mean they aren't capable of a lot of things. They just need the proper training and, and I don't think we provide it in a lot of cases. In a lot of cases we do and, and that's one thing you hear more and more. Uh, when, when you hear other people, consultants in particular I think is where I hear this a lot, you hear other people talking about the good farms, the first comment they lead off with is they really know how to train people over there. And, uh, 20 years ago I don't know that you heard that as much as you do now. But that's usually the first thing they talk about that, that someone will talk about when they're talking about the the type of work, the good work that a farm, a dairy farm does. What difficulties do you have in managing employees to ensure that they stay with the protocols? For example, milking. The difficulties I have is not getting my uh, a rear end out there alongside them as much as I should. It's easy to get caught up in other work that, that disassociates you from the people that are working for you when the, the best thing you can do is stand next to them, watch them do it, and, and show them the way that you want it done, explain to them why it needs to be done that way. Explain, and ex here, here's what I like to do. I, li I, I like to give them options. Uh, explain what we're trying to accomplish. Give them three different ways. You know, you, you decide what's best. Uh, the, these, these are all, there are, there, there, obviously there are wrong answers. But here's a few right answers. You can do it whichever way you're comfortable with. And if you come up with a writer answer, please tell me before you start doing it. But I'm open. I'm open to suggestions. You have to make these protocols simple to understand, not necessarily simple to do. You're talking about some fairly complicated tasks in a lot of cases. But you have to make them understandable. And I, I think I've, I've incorporated photography when I can, but that takes forever. But it's a good way to get a, a to get uh, past language difficulties.
be it foreign language or, or native language. Um, are there particular challenges to train and supervise Spanish-speaking employees? The language difference is, is a big a big hill to get over. Uh, I'm actually pretty amazed at the way a lot of dairy producers manage to do that. We have been very blessed here, and it, and it is a blessing, I mean that, in the, uh, I'm not using that word lightly, that we have had bilingual people pretty much as long as we have employed anyone that didn't speak English, we've had someone to translate. But I, I know a lot of people that have that don't have that. They have people that speak Spanish, people that speak English, and somehow they manage to get it done. And, and I'm not talking about bad farms either. There are a lot of people that do a good job, good do a good job of training and do a good job of managing the people that don't speak English. I don't know how they do it. It's amazing. But yeah, it is an issue because it uh, throws your whole protocol, producing protocols. It adds another uh, 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 flavor that you have to produce that in. And it's not a flavor that I'm versed in producing. So that's why I've incorporated emoticons into protocols or, or uh, goal sheets, where if we write up goals with, say, somatic cell and things like that, if it's good, they get a smiley face. That's, I know it's, that's purely second grade, but you know, it's, it's second grade for a reason. It's because everybody understands it. Is employee turnover a problem? Not for us. Uh, that's something I don't get on enough other farms to know what the industry is experiencing there, but we have people, we have several people that have worked 10 plus years for us. Uh, um, we lose milkers. We have a little more turnover in the milkers, milking staff than anywhere else, but that is a function of the fact that that's a, it's a tough job. It's a physical job and people burn out sometimes. Uh, we, tr we try, they're, they're compensated uh, better, slightly better than anybody else because it's a tougher job, but they work, I was gonna say they work more hours, but they don't. Uh, they, they work a, a two on one off schedule, but they're 12 hour shifts. So that's a, it's a grind. And, and so we lose people in that job. You gotta pay people, you just do. And the places that have high turnover don't pay people. I know that the research indicates that a happy workplace retains people better than a paycheck does. But a paycheck, it does have a role. <laughs> There's no question about it. Treating people like they're they are treating people like they are starting on a career, not just a job, pays dividends, and that's something we haven't done. It's something we're just beginning to do, actually. I, and I'm not entirely sure how to do it, but I, I do try. I, I just today I was talking to an employee who uh, referred to the farm as my farm, and and I told her. You can say our farm. I, you've been here long enough. I'd like to think that you are taking a sense of ownership. It's, it's a, not in the creepy like me and her farm. It's it's every everyone that contributes to it. It's our. It's. I, I want them to have that mentality. I don't. I, I can't speak for other producers, but I, I listen to them, and I listen to other people that are in the industry, and I think some of us maybe don't appreciate what we should be investing in them. We hear from consultants. We hear from anyone that we open the books for that our payroll costs are too high. I'm not sure if I should have said that or not, but and I, I, you have to take care of people. That's why they stay. Uh, they stay because we treat them well. They have a voice. I'm always going to listen to them. <laughs> We're putting enough money into the labor force that it's a legitimate statement that it's our farm. The, the stuff that you read in, in the dairy media about respecting Hispanic culture and, and doing it their way, a lot of it's just not, it's, not, it's just not correct. It, at least around here with the people that I rub elbows with, it's, that's not their culture. And it's, some of it's embarrassing. Some of it's going to get somebody sued <laughs> because, oh, the, you know, the, the Hispanic people, they like to hug. So you should be willing to hug. That's, the Hispanic people I know are going to punch me if I hug them. <laughs> male or female. We do not have an incentive program. I don't believe in it. Just for the fact that, and I, I, this is probably old school thinking and I'm embarrassed to say it, but we're paying them to do a good job. That's, that's the understanding. Having said that, when we get to certain land, landmarks, certain uh, goals, I'll do informal things. Uh, I don't know what they are because we haven't hit the goals that I 
have have uh, have stated yet, but I certainly would do something. They, I want them to understand. That's where that research comes into play. I think it because the money, they aren't going to do it if it means a bonus of whatever, unless it's a ton of money, which then isn't going to pay off for us. So. And, and it probably isn't going to motivate them to the extent you would think anyway. The recognition that, that I know that, that they made it happen, that they, they achieved that goal, I didn't achieve it, they did it. That recognition means more than anything. So I just need to figure out a way to do that. Because we will get there to, the, to our goals eventually. So I, I, I need to be ready. But uh, that's, I think that's the important thing, that they understand that, that I know that it's them, it's not me. I had a business management class at Michigan State that, uh, and don't get me wrong, I was not a good student by any stretch. I couldn't defend my abilities as a student. I couldn't even imagine how to, because you can't. It was terrible. But I managed to show up on one of the days when he said something that stuck with me. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a very basic thing. It's just if, if your employees do something wrong, 90, I don't know, 95% of the time it's your fault. If you you have to embrace that as a manager because it's true. It's absolutely true. There's no question about it. And that is a really hard thing for a lot of people to get past. I mean, my goal is to have a farm that that somebody wants. If if that if it comes to that and it needs to be sold, I, I want to have something that is that can be transferred to someone else without making any changes. That they aren't going to take it and say, well, we need to do this, this, and this. They're going to say it's this. It's already profitable. It's already well run. It's already responsible. They're already following the rules, so we're just going to stick with this, and then my employees will have jobs. And that's probably the biggest concern for me in that. I don't want to see this place liquidated and see them scatter and have to go work for somebody else. Which It's not that I don't trust other people, but like I've said, it's not roses everywhere. It's not always roses here, don't get me wrong. We're not perfect, but, but I think we have a fairly decent environment for them, and, and I don't want to see them have to go somewhere else. So, so that's probably our goal here.